Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. It's early. Yeah, I like the early morning. So, you like the early morning? I like it. Yeah. yeah it's, my, it's my favorite part of the day. It's the most peaceful, most quiet. And it's before the madness of life begins. And so this morning I was praying. I got up very early this morning. And I was thinking, you know, Lord, um, I had planned to say, give a particular message. But I felt impressed that I've given you a lot of challenging messages, so I should encourage you. <laughs> so it's very, very important, you know, not just to challenge people, but to give them the grace and the encouragement and the faith in Christ to believe that he can help them obtain such a high, high calling. So let us pray and then we'll get into our study. Our Father, thank you for this new day of life. Your mercies are new every morning. And great is your faithfulness. We take this moment to consecrate ourselves to you. To give you all that we are and all that we have. And to ask that you would order our lives this day according to your word. Baptize us anew with your Holy Spirit. And open our eyes that we may see amazing things in your word. This is our prayer. And we offer this prayer from our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So take your Bibles, go to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2. I initially uh, wrote this presentation uh, many years ago for a graduation. And so it was kind of like my uh, going away message at that time to the, to the graduation group. So on occasions like these where this may be the last time I see many of you until the Lord comes, so I feel like it's important to share these things from my heart so that if I don't see you again, that these words will remain with you until the Lord comes. So the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 3, it says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life 
that he may please him who enlisted him to be a soldier. So the first thing, I want to give you four qualities of a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Because when we talk about oneness in Christ, the illustration of a soldier is so appropriate. Because the military, in order for it to work, they have to be unified. And even more so, when you're engaged in an actual battle or war, you must be unified. And so if a group of soldiers that are engaged in a war become disunified, they will lose very quickly. So it is a very, very safe assumption that a person who is a good soldier of Jesus Christ will also be a good soldier to fight with. So the first quality of a good soldier, the Bible says in chapter 2 and verse 3, that you must endure hardship. In other words, in order to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you must be able to deal with difficulties. Can you imagine that a soldier is in a, in a war situation? And that soldier is completely uncomfortable with the fact that they're living in the field away from air conditioning. And so they say, hey, we have to go over there because that's where the battle is. But the soldier says to himself, well, it's too hot to go out there. That's a minor, minor difficulty compared to being killed. And for those who may not know, I, years ago, before I was a Christian, I was uh, a United States Marine. And I remember when I was in training for war. So you actually have a specific training just for war. And in the early part of your training, you have to stay awake for an entire 24 hours. And so all day long you're doing all these trainings and you're digging holes in the ground. And then when it becomes night, now you have to basically patrol around everyone while they're sleeping. And everyone has to take turns. So during about the 12 hours of night, you have to spend the first six hours sitting in a bush looking through your weapon. You can't move. You can't stop to drink water. You can't go use the bathroom. Nothing. And you obviously cannot fall asleep. Because it is a law in the military. That if you are in a war situation, and you fall asleep, when you were supposed to be watching, 
They tell you in training, you won't wake up. Because they're going to shoot you on the spot. Because you endangered everyone. And in the second six hours, you have to walk around to these different checkpoints. And I remember when it was my turn to do it. The first six hours, I was just fine. But then, when I had to walk around to the different checkpoints, I went to the second checkpoint, and so I was just looking around to see if no one was coming. Then I put my weapon on my shoulder, and I just leaned against the tree. You should never do that if you haven't been sleeping. So I, I fell asleep. Standing up. <laughs> and what woke me up was was uh, the barrel of a gun <laughs> in my face. And it was my superior. And he said, if this was in wartime, you wouldn't have woke up. He said, I would have shot you immediately. He says, because if you're going to be a Marine, you need to endure hardship. You have to be willing to still work even when you're tired. So when I hear people saying that when they're trying to have their personal time with God, and they're trying to study the Bible, but, but they're so tired, and they fall asleep when they're praying, and they fall asleep when they're reading their Bible, you have to learn. To endure hardship. You have to learn how to push yourself even when you're tired. You remember that Jesus in Gethsemane, he wanted his disciples to pray with him. And they fell asleep. And Christ, with a broken heart, said, Could you not have prayed with me for one hour? You know, it's very easy to be busy. To run here and to run there, doing your different errands. It's another thing to sit down and be still. So many of us are so busy that if we sit down and we're still, we will fall asleep. And so we must continue to grow in the discipline of being a Christian. In the Marines, they have a definition for discipline. And they say discipline is the ability to continue to do something when you don't want to do it and when you think you can't do it. So I tell people, when you say, oh, I don't want to study the Bible, I'm not getting anything out of the Bible. You must have discipline. You study anyway. You pray anyway. That's what discipline is. And this is a part of the preparation for the time that we know is coming upon the earth. There's a, there's a saying in Jeremiah. If you can't keep up with the footmen, 
the footmen, like the infantry, people on the, who are walking. So it's like soldiers who are walking. Right. Yeah. Um, 훈련하는 그런 어, 군인들처럼 계속해서 훈련할 수 없으면. He says, "What are you going to do when the horses are running?" 말이 뜰때 당신은 어떻게 할 것입니까?라고 그런 말이 있습니다. Because that's what's coming for us. 어, 저희가 이제 앞으로 경험하게 될 일이 그런 것이기 때문입니다. If we are struggling to maintain a prayer life when we have all the time and the peace in the world to worship God, what are we going to do when we don't? 지금처럼 우리가 아직도 평화롭게 예수님을 어, 경배하고 기도할 수 있는 시간에도 저희가 기도하는 것이 어려워한다면 정말 어려운 상황이 왔을 때 저희가 어떻게 할 것인가요? There's one more story I want to say and then I'll move on from this point. 어, 저, 제가 다음 그 덕목으로 가기 전에 한 가지 이야기를 더 하겠습니다. It's a, a story about a, a man in Rome, ancient Rome, 어, in the early church. 고대 로마의 초기 교회에서 있었던 일입니다. And in this story, he heard a group of Christians singing hymns to Christ. And so he, he said to himself, 아, 사람이, 아, Should I report this? Because if he reports this, they're going to be killed that night. 이 사람이 만약에 이거를 정부에다가 고발을 하면은 그 기독교인들이 다 죽게 될 것입니다. So he decided to follow Roman law and he reported them. 그래서 이 사람은 로마의 법대로 이 크리, 기, 그 찬양하고 있는 그리스도인들을 보고하기로 결심했습니다. So multiple Roman soldiers came, they took the Christians and they took them to the river. 그래서 어, 그 결과 이제 로마 군병들이 와가지고 이 기, 기독교인들을 and this was in the middle of the night, in the middle of winter. And so the centurion came. And he looked at the Christians and he said, take off everything and I want you to go into the river. And then he told his soldier, he said, I want you to start a fire. A fire. 그 다음에 옆에 있는 다른 군인에게 말하기를 근처에 어, 불을 지펴라 이렇게. So they built this huge bonfire. 그래서 그 근처에 강가 옆에 바로 옆에 아주 큰 캠프파이어 같은 그런 어, 불을 지폈습니다. And the centurion said. 그리고 선 백부장이 말하기를. When you're ready to be warmed by the fire. 음, 당신들 그 강가에 있는 당신들 중에 아무나 만약에 여기 와서 불 옆에서 따뜻하게 원한다면. He said, you can come out of the water and you can pledge your allegiance to Caesar. And so they waited in silence. And their swords were drawn in case they tried to run and escape. And so as they were freezing in the silence of the night of winter, 고요한 그 겨울밤에 이 사람들이 물 속에서 기독교인들이 어, 얼어가고 있었습니다. They started coming together. 그런데 그 사람들이 작은 그룹이었죠. 같이 모였습니다. And then they started singing a song. 그리고 전 노래를 부리기 시작했습니다. And they said, 40 <웃음> men of God are we. 어, 하, 그, 하나님의 어, 40명의 군사들 이렇게. Faithful forever we shall be. 어, 하나님께 영원히 충성을 하자. And they just kept singing it over and over. And as the night went on, and they kept singing this song over and over, one of the men started walking out of the water. And the other men said, no, don't do it. You have to seal your faith in God with your own life. You have to be faithful unto death. He says you have an eternal reward. But he kept going out the water. He knelt down before the centurion and he confessed his allegiance to Caesar. 
They gave him a blanket and he warmed himself by the fire. And the other men were shocked. They didn't know what to say. And after a few minutes of silence, they started singing, 39 men of God are we. <laughs> Faithful forever we shall be. 39 men of God are we. Faithful forever we shall be. And as they kept singing, and the night went on, that all of a sudden they noticed that something was happening on the shore of the river. It was a centurion. He had dropped his shield. He had dropped his sword. He started taking off his armor. And he started taking off his clothes. And he started walking in the water. And he said, no. Forty men of God are we. Faithful forever we shall be. And they all died in that river. Because they were good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We must endure hardness. The second quality of a good soldier. The Bible says in verse 4 that no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. The second quality of a good soldier is that when there is a war going on, the soldier is engaged in the warfare. Can you imagine there's a war going on and the soldier's like, I'm not interested in fighting. But you're a soldier, that's what you do. All your training and all your effort is for this moment. And this applies to us as soldiers of Jesus Christ. We know that we are engaged in a warfare between Christ and Satan. That we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. That's not our warfare. People are not our enemy. This is why the unity of the soldiers is so important. For, for us to be fighting each other is like soldiers fighting each other in a time of war. You're actually helping the enemy. We are doing the devil's work for him. This is why Sister White says when we are accusing other people or we are suspicious of their motives, we are doing the devil's work because he is the accuser of our brethren. And we have to be so careful with our words. Because the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. What we say can literally break another person's heart. And that's not where our warfare is. That's not where our battle is. And so he says, a good soldier is engaged in the warfare. 
So just coming to a spiritual conference is not engaging in warfare. Listening to sermons on Audioverse is not engaging in the warfare. Just reading books and praying is not engaging in the warfare. Unless you're engaging in intercessory prayer. And Ellen White reminds us in Steps to Christ that the person who only prays will cease to pray. Because he will have nothing to pray about. We must not separate ourselves from the social parts of life so that we can have something to come to God about. The easiest way to have an experience with the power of God is to engage in the work of spreading the gospel. I shared this uh, story in my seminar yesterday. I remember I was uh, going door to door selling books. And so I met this woman at the door. And as soon as she opened the door, I started trying to show her the books. And the woman said, oh, please, can you come back tomorrow? And she was very insistent, please come back tomorrow. And I said, listen, ma'am, we can't come back. We're not able to come back. She was not interested today. She said, please, just come back tomorrow. So in my mind, going door to door, people say that all the time. I'm like, they're not going to be here tomorrow. She's probably going to leave on a plane to Germany tomorrow. So I tried to show her some of the cheaper books. She was still not interested. She insisted, come back tomorrow. So fine, I left, I went home, and that night, went to sleep, woke up the next morning. And the Lord was impressing my heart. You need to go back to that house. So while I was driving, because it was about 45 minutes away, so as I was driving, the Lord was talking to me, you need to go back to that house. And I was saying, no, I'm not going back to the house. I'm like, it's a waste of time. <coughs> Whenever you come back, very rarely do they actually buy anything. So I kept driving and as I was getting close to her street, the Holy Spirit just came even heavier on my mind. You need to go to this woman's house. It was kind of like the persistent widow. The Lord just kept talking to me about this, going to this woman's house. <laughs> So then I decided, fine, Lord, I'm going to go and I'm going to show you. This woman is not going to be home. Listen, when you're going to door all by yourself, you know, for weeks after weeks, you, you're very honest with the Lord. Because, I mean, you have no one but Jesus. That's it. There's, there's no one else out there. So I turned into the driveway. And I was such a spiritual brat, I didn't even bring all the books with me into the house. <laughs> I left half of them in the car. So I knocked on the door. And then she said, come to the garage. 
So I went around, she opened the door and she said, come inside, please. She took me to the kitchen. She says, wait here, I'll be right back. So I was waiting, I was looking around, trying to figure out if there's anything I could use, you know, to sell some books. <laughs> And I looked down on the kitchen counter and there was a blank check already signed. So I said, oh, this lady's ready to pay. So I took out all the books, spread them out on the table, made them look really nice. And I was ready. I was going to tell her, ma'am, you have to buy all the books. We don't sell individuals. So I was ready. So she comes into the kitchen and she says, I want to buy everything you have. I said, everything? She said, I want to buy everything. That's when I know my angel was laughing at me. You shouldn't have left those books in the car. <laughs> I said, man, I should have brought all the books. <laughs> so she, I told her the price. She signed the check. It was like $350, $300. So after she filled out the check, she said, can I ask you a question? I said, you can ask me anything. <laughs> she said, are you an angel? I said, no. She says, are you sure you're not an angel? I'm sure I'm not an angel. She says, are you really sure that you're not an angel? I said, you can ask my mom. I'm not an angel. <laughs> she says, well, let me tell you why I'm asking. I said, okay, sure. So she said, a year and a half ago, I was living in a different city, in a different house. I just moved into this house two weeks ago. But she says, in that other house, a year and a half ago, I was having a dream. And in the dream, I was talking to this angel. And she says, and then I woke up, and the angel in my dream was at the end of my bed. And so she tried to look at the angel, but it moved fast and went out the window. So she jumped out of the bed and she ran to the window to see if she could continue to see the angel. But the angel was gone. So she said when she put her head back inside the window, she says there was this smell in the room. And she says, I never smelled it before. So she said, for the last year and a half, I've gone to every perfume, every cologne, any flower, any incense. Trying to find this smell. And she says, I could not find it until yesterday. She says, when you came to my house and I opened the door, you had the smell. I said, what? <laughs> I wasn't wearing any cologne. <laughs> she said, no, you had the smell. And so she said, I wasn't hearing anything you were saying. She said, I was just so shocked. Because she said, in my mind, I was thinking, could this angel, could this person be the angel that was in my dream? But she says, I wasn't ready to talk to the angel. 
So she said, I said, come back tomorrow. And she said, I knew that if it was truly an angel from God, the angel would come back. Because you said you promised that you would come back. And here I was thinking, I'm not going back to that house. <laughs> And she says, even right now, you have the smell. So she said, I had already promised myself that whatever you were selling, I was going to buy everything. She signed up for Bible studies. Signed up to come to Daniel Revelation seminar. Everything. We had prayer together. And I left the house. And I just had to apologize to God. Because God had started a testimony for me a year and a half ago. And God was trying to use me to be an answer to somebody's prayer. And here I was being selfish and saying, I don't want to go back to this house. But these are the kinds of experiences that we will have when we engage in the warfare. 우리가 전쟁을 전쟁터에 나갔을 때 우리가 전쟁을 할 준비가 되어 있다면 이러한 경험들을 하게 될 것입니다. And this is one of the marks of a good soldier. 이런 것이 좋은 군사의 한 표징입니다. Go forth to serve the Lord and you will see the power of God. I promise you. 하나님을 위해서 일하러 나가십시오. 그러면 하나님의 능력을 경험하게 될 것입니다. I could tell you many more stories, but we're running out of time. <laughs> Quality number three. The Bible says in verse four, no one entangle, engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. The third quality of a good soldier of Jesus Christ is that he or she does not allow themselves to be entangled with all the things of this life. You see, when you're a soldier and you're engaged in warfare, you can't think about your mortgage at home. You're not in a battlefield and trying to check your text messages. Oh, let me see who's texting me, who liked me on Facebook. <laughs> You're engaged in the warfare. And you can't allow yourself to be entangled with these things. Where they have you bound and you cannot serve God the way that you are called to serve God. We must be careful of anything or any person that we connect ourselves with that presents us, prevents us from being able to serve Christ as a good soldier. So many of us are entangled right now. We are tied down. We are bound by all the concerns of this life. I've been in the homes of billionaires. These people have everything. And when I sit in their homes, these beautiful buildings, Right there in this beautiful house, they look at me and they say, Sebastian, I would trade all the money I have to have the experiences that you have with God. 
All they talk about is selling the house. 그들이 말하는 것 계속해서 말하는 것은 집을 파는 것입니다. Getting rid of all the cars. 차를 파는 것입니다. Trying to find something that can give them meaning in life. Because they have so much to live with and they have nothing to live for. They want a sense of purpose. But every time they come and they say, Sebastian, I really wanted to come hear you preach. Sorry, I'll finish it. So they come and they say, I really wanted to come hear you preach, but I'm so busy signing this contract and going to this meeting and flying over here to deal with this problem, I have no time to invest in my own spiritual walk with God. Because they're entangled. With the affairs of this life. And it's not just for the wealthy. It's also for the poor as well. So busy taking care of these things in life. We have no time. Well, no time, quote unquote. We have time. We're just not using it well. And if we're going to be a good soldier, we have to separate ourselves from these things. Don't allow ourselves to be entangled. We want to always make ourselves free to be able to serve God when He needs us to serve Him. That's what enables us to be a good soldier. The last quality of a good soldier. The Bible says in verse 4, He says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Jesus' army is different than any other army. See, in other armies, you can volunteer. I want to sign up. I want to join. Can't do that in Jesus' army. You have to be called. Can you imagine the king of the universe? He calls you. And he says, I want you to be a soldier to defend my kingdom. And, to, and I want you to help me to tear down the devil's kingdom. The honor and the privilege would make you want to please him. Who called you to be a soldier. See, the aim of a good soldier is to please him who called him to be a soldier. You know, in the Marine Corps, at the end of Marine Corps basic training, <coughs> we have something called the crucible. Um, well, a real crucible is like something that's like uh, burning up, like it's being tested and purified. But a crucible, it's basically just the end of the training where you have to do all these very difficult things. And this is basically three days where you only sleep four hours the entire three days. 
many hours? Four hours. Four hours. And you have to do all these different obstacle courses during the time. And you end up hiking about 150 kilometers. With about 30 kilograms on your back. And you only have enough food for one day. 그리고 하루 정도의 식량만 가지고 어, survive 해야 됩니다. Halfway through my first day, <웃음> 첫 번째 날한반 정도 지났는데, someone stole my food. <웃음> 제 음식을 누가 훔쳐간 것입니다. So I had no food the last two and a half days. 그래서 나머지 이틀 반 동안은 음식이 없었습니다. No sleep. 잠도 못 자고. And the last part of it, you actually have to hike 20 kilometers. Hike, you have to march. 20 and as you march, the sun starts coming up. And you come to this, this big open like parking lot. And while you wait there, the general is going to meet you. So while we're waiting, my friend and I were talking. And he said, hey man, we're done. We finished. So he says, when the general comes, and they salute you, and they put the rank on your collar, and they say, good morning, Marine. He says, are you going to cry? I said, no, I'm not going to cry. I'm a Marine. And I said, are you going to cry? He's like, no, I'm a Marine. <laughs> so we waited. The general came. He gave this inspiring speech. You are Marines. You're the best of the best. You're the first. You've been through the most difficult training. And he says, and you made it. So after he finished his speech, they have our different sergeants in our group that come. And they come to every individual person and they stand in front of them and then they salute them. And then he says, okay, relax. So he came in front of my friend. And he told my friend, relax, relax. Then he, he took the sign that he was a Marine. And he started putting it on the collar of his shirt. Then he stepped back. And he saluted him. And he said, good morning, Marine. And my friend started crying. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I was smiling in my mind. And I mean, this was not like tears. This guy was really crying. <laughs> so then he came in front of me. <laughs> then he saluted me. <laughs> then I saluted him back. <laughs> and then he said, relax. <laughs> And then he came close, and he started putting the signs on my collar, and he said, Braxton, he says, you're going to be a good Marine. He said, I'm proud of you. He says, you're going to be a leader. He says, continue to strive for excellence in everything you do. He said, I'm proud to be your sergeant. Then he stepped back. And he said, Good morning, Marine. And then I started crying. <laughs> and I was so shocked. 
So the next, after the ceremony, 끝나고, I went to have breakfast with my friend. <laughs> so I said, hey man, why did you start crying? <laughs> <laughs> and he looked, he said, why did you start crying? <laughs> so I said, no, you first. <laughs> he said, well, to be honest, <laughs> he said, I don't know. He says, when he saluted me, and for the very first time, he called me a Marine. He said, it seemed like everything that I had gone through came back to my mind. He said, all the times I wanted to quit came back to my mind. And he says, it just overwhelmed me and I started crying. And I said, that's exactly what I was thinking. That it was over. It was done. And you know, one day, as we endeavored to please him who called us to be his soldiers, we're going to be there on the sea of glass. And we're going to meet the general. After we go through a very difficult time at the end. And when Jesus is there, on the sea of glass, he's not going to say, good morning, Marines. He's going to come. He's going to put a crown on your head. He's going to say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. And he's going to step back. And he's going to say, good morning, your majesty. He's going to say that? Good morning, your majesty. Yes. He's going to say that to us? Yes. <laughs> no problem. Majesty, how should I? Good morning. Um, good morning, king or queen. Let's see. And you don't have to ask the question whether I'm going to cry. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to cry. <laughs> because just like boot camp, I'm going to remember in that moment all the times I wanted to quit. All the times that I fought against sin and I failed. All the effort to win souls. And no one accepted. All the prayers when you were discouraged. And you thought, there's no way I'm going to be saved. All the times I wanted to do so much more for God. But my own sin. And my own failures. Kept me. And all I'm going to be thinking is, I wish I would have done more for the Lord. But see, there's something different in heaven. Because when everyone receives their crown, Adam is going to walk over to Christ. And he's going to put his crown at Jesus' feet. And we're all going to follow him. And we're going to say, no, Lord. We're not here because we were faithful. 
We are here because you were faithful. And someone's going to start the song. They're going to say, crown him with many crowns. Crown him. The Lord of all. And there at Jesus' feet, it's going to hit us. It's over. It's over. We shall forever and ever and ever be with the Lord. A good soldier. I want to be a good soldier. What about you? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. This morning, we have hope that life will not always continue this way. That one day Jesus is going to look at us and he's going to say, your warfare is over. He's going to look you in the eye. He's going to lift up your head. And he's going to say, you won. You have overcome. You have gained the victory. You have been faithful. In that hope, may this hope carry us through every difficulty of life. May this hope encourage us in the darkest moments of life. And if there's anyone here this morning that says, Lord, I want to be there to cast my crown down at Jesus' feet. And I want to join that song where we will sing Crown Him with Many Crowns. And we will tell the Lord you have been faithful. Faithful to the end. If that's your prayer, I want you to join me here for prayer up front. You say, I want to be there. To cast my crown down at Jesus' feet. Father in heaven, on this final morning, we are not large in numbers, but Lord, we are large in heart. Lord, the beauty of the hope that we have, we so long for that day. 
where we will not be kneeling in Samyuk University. But we will be kneeling on the sea of glass. With the faithful of all ages. Oh, what will it be to be there? To see a sea of people kneeling down at the feet of Jesus. Millions and millions of crowns being laid at his feet. And so, Father, we are here kneeling this morning because we want to be in that number. Because we want that hope to remain in our hearts no matter how difficult it gets in life. That, Lord, we want this hope to give us strength when we feel weak. Lord, to help us to press on when we feel like we have nothing left. And to continue to believe when everything says we should not believe. And Lord, we're just submitting ourselves to you because we are confident that you will be faithful. That you have begun a good work in our lives. And you will finish it. And you will make us ready for Jesus' coming. Lord, encourage the brokenhearted this morning. Strengthen the weak. Anoint the fearful. And Lord, support those who are broken. Lord, we are so thankful for your word. We're so thankful for these precious promises. And for that glorious day, keep us faithful. Faithful unto death. This is our prayer. And we trust that you will help this to be our experience. For we ask in Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen.